We just got a bunch of tasty info about the upcoming Falcon and Winter Soldier show, how it's all going to tie in to the end of Avengers Endgame, what Sam Wilson's going to do with that big old Captain America shield, and a bunch of other sweet details. We're going to break it all down. It's like the news, but for nerds. Subscribe so you never miss an episode. Today's shout out goes to Nate Wardrip. Indeed, the original title for A Dream of Spring was going to be A Time for Wolves. We'll do another nerd card question at the end of this video. What is up, everybody? Happy Tuesday to you. I'm, of course, Josh. This is the Den of Nerds, and whoo! We got a tasty Marvel story to talk about today. Been a little dry when it comes to Marvel news, like for real. No, I know. Now, a lot of info dropped yesterday. I want to break it all down. It all began with a big article dropped by Deadline. They talked about the director for the show. They talked about who's going to be in the cast and what the plot will sort of circle around. According to Deadline, Carrie Scogland will direct all six episodes. And we're going to come back to that in a second because it's kind of weird. But yeah, there'll be six episodes. It's described as a mini series, but this is just confirming the episode length. The series will be starring Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. Now, we all knew that was going to happen, but it's nice to have it confirmed. And Daniel Brawl and Emily Van Camp are both going to reprise their roles from Captain America Civil War in this mini series as well. The story does deal with Sam Wilson getting the shield from Steve Rogers at the end of Avengers Endgame. And according to Sebastian Stan, there will be a lot of development for the Bucky character as well as he just sort of deals with the world and, you know, his new status within the world. Lastly, Deadline reports that the show will premiere in August of 2020. Now, if you're like me, you're probably like, Carrie who? And yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with Carrie Scogland, um, at least at, by name, but apparently she's done a lot of television. She's done episodes of The Handmaiden's Tale, The Punisher, and The Walking Dead. Now, it's super interesting that they are doing a single director for this show. Now, this is not a TV thing. TV is more of a writer's game. The writers are king on television, and you'll usually have a group of writers like, you know, Dan and Dave that write a lot of the episodes and outline how the show is going to go. You'll have a showrunner, which is really more like a producer, but you'll really have a lot of different directors kind of come in and out. They can put their own stamp on things, and overall, they don't adjust the story very much and work on the script. So that's normally how television works. But this show, having a single director, just shows me that Feige and the MCU team are going to treat this thing as though they are shooting a six to eight hour movie. And Carrie's worked a lot in television. She knows what works in pacing and The Handmaiden's Tale is a show for streaming. So I'm sure she understands that world as well. Overall, I'm pretty excited for it. Like I said, I'm really not familiar with Carrie as a name or as a brand. This show will probably elevate her to a whole new level. I'm sure visually she's great. I mean, you got to trust Feige. You got to trust everybody over there. If they picked her, it's for a very good reason. And I'm super excited to see what she does with these two characters, you know, and the other characters as well in this miniseries. Now let's talk plot. Now, of course, we don't have a lot of details here, but we can go to Speculation Town, baby. That's my favorite zip code and you know it. Now, obviously this is gonna take place post-Snap, post-Avengers Endgame. That in and of itself sets up the world for very interesting conflicts. Bucky and Falcon are probably going to be tasked with trying to help out in whatever way they can. I'm, I'm sure Nick Fury might play a role in this series as well, even if it's just a cameo. And Baron Zemo is back. Zemo is back as a villain, which is really cool, because although I loved the arc that Brawl had in Civil War, I thought, wow, they kept him alive. That's really cool. I'd love to see him break out and uh, cause some real mischief in the future. Now, Zemo likes to play mind games, and I think what's really interesting here is the whole series is going to be in the wake of Steve Rogers not being around anymore. The world's going to be dealing with this. Perhaps Zemo sees this as an opportunity of sorts. Perhaps he's trying to destroy Sam mentally so that there will never be another Captain America. It's really hard to say, but you can bet for a lot of intrigue and a lot of drama. All of these characters have history together. They all have connections to Steve Rogers, so it's really interesting that that's the way that they want to go with the overall narrative for the Falcon and Winter Soldier series. I feel like Bucky's going to be really conflicted in this show and want to kill the literal F out of Zemo for various reasons. Of course, he, you know, messed with his mind and nobody likes that. And so I think he'll be out for blood and Sam will sort of be the voice of reason. And Sam is going to really become Captain America in this series, I believe. And not so much as like, oh, I'm getting, you know, my attributes. Now I have the armor. I can wear the shield. Now I'm Cap. More like he's going to really feel the voice of Steve Rogers echoing as he makes all the decisions that he makes from here on out. 
the responsibility of being Captain America, of living up to Steve Rogers' legacy is going to weigh heavily on him, man. Influence him. Make him a better person. And I think that's what we're going to see. We've already seen that Sam is a good guy. He he cares. He wants people to work through their stuff. He's, he's a good soul. I mean, he's really a lot like Steve in that way. And I think just like Steve was always there for Bucky, now it's going to be Sam's turn. Sam is going to have to be there for Bucky. And this relationship is going to be forged really strongly in this miniseries. I also believe the next time we see Anthony Mackie on the silver screen, he just will be Captain America. He will have the shield. He'll have, you know, the probably red, white, and blue all over him. And the miniseries will be like the way that that happens, the way that it becomes acceptable or is earned in the eyes of fans. And But you won't need to see it. Like if you just go see the next movie, I think you're going to have Falcon Cap. But that is the news out there, guys. A bunch of tasty details when it comes to the Falcon Winter Soldier show. What do you think about this? What do you think about the single director thing? The fact that it's going to be six episodes? The basic ideas that we have for the plot? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. Now let's check the nerd card. Before we get out of here, I want to know what color mask does Baron Zemo wear in the comic books? He obviously doesn't wear a mask at all, at least not in Civil War. But the question remains, what color is his mask in the comic books? Answer that question in the comments comment section below. Guys, if you're still hanging around here, I want to tease something really cool. We just passed a thousand followers on Instagram. Ken, the master of memes, the manager of our social media here at the Den of Nerds has been doing a great job growing the following over there on Instagram. And we wanted to give you guys a little something special. We decided we're going to do an AMA. Ask me anything guys and it doesn't have to be nerd related could be personal could be whatever we're going to just take a bunch of random questions we're going to do a live stream on instagram sometime next week where i will answer all of these fun questions a video like that wouldn't really do good on youtube but some of you out there would be interested to see my answers to your weird questions so that seems like a good spot to do it we'll do it on the gram and to celebrate the thousand followers go follow us on instagram if you have not done so yet as i always say i hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day and i'll see you in the next video